Hi guys, welcome to BFS Wargaming. So we're back for another video. This time we are talking about, again, things that we feel like need to be maybe fixed in 140K 9th edition. Um, and today's topic is gonna be the Necron Codex. Now, when the Necron Codex came out, I loved it. I loved the fix to reanimation. There's a lot of things I really, really, really like in the Necron Codex. The thing I don't like about the Necron Codex is how restricted it is compared to every other codex. Especially, you know, when it first came out, there was only one other codex with it, and it felt a little bit restricted compared to that one, but okay, it was fine. And then each codex has come out, it just seems to be less and less and less restricted. Um, you know, looking at Drukhari, looking at um, Dark Angels, looking at Admech, you know, there's a lot of play with those and it's very restricted in the Necron Codex. So let's go into it. So, um, first off, Warlord Traits and Relics. Now, the Warlord Traits and Relics in some of the dynasties are actually quite nice. Um, there's no hugely great relics. I mean, there's a good relic in the Saltec, um, which is the can't fall back, um, sorry, fight last within three inches on a character. The trouble is, is you know, you've got to get your character in, in close, and there's not many characters you want uh, in close. Maybe the Scorpec Lord or the Lockhust Lord, and are they really being taken? Probably not, because they're not really efficient for their points. Um, and then, you know, you've got Vale of Darkness, which is really, really nice. <sighs> Other than that, the, the, the uh, Gauntlet Conflagrator, the... Um, Flamer, again, it's quite nice in certain situations, but not amazing. And then you have the Warlord Traits. The Warlord Traits, like, the Warlord Traits in some of the other codexes are really nice at buffing the armies. The Warlord Traits in the Necron Codex only buff the character, and our characters are bad. We don't necessarily want to buff our characters, we want to buff our units. It's like, oh, Enduring Will, minus one damage on an Overlord. Woo! Like, our Overlord, once, you, once you've got to our Overlord, we've probably lost the game. Or it's like the last turn, or the last couple of turns, and we're like, yeah, we don't care if we lose him because we're just trying to get points. But it's not like we're sending our Overlord. You can't even, he's got four attacks. You're not going to beef up your Overlord and send him in. It's not like a Smash Captain. So I just don't really understand the logic behind a lot of the Warlord traits, it just seems super restrictive. I mean, the best Warlord trait, the only two Warlord traits I think that are really good are the Saltec one, which is um, getting CP on a five up, and the other one is the Cesarican Warlord trait, which is really, really nice for mani manipulating the command protocols. Other than that, I'm like, meh. The others are, so so not very good um so that's the wall of traits and relics stratagems we've got some nice stratagems to keep stuff alive like quantum deflection and some other things like i'm not i'm not too bothered about the stratagems the oh, necron players often say like i've got nothing to spend my cp on um i do usually end up using most of my cp probably using it to re-roll for doomsday to be honest but um there are other things in there that are quite nice. You can take away cover and, and things like that. So, moving on, command protocols. Now, command protocols is a big bugbear of mine. I do use them, and I try and really manipulate the protocols as best as I can to help my army. Having a six inch range on the characters is so restricted. So restricted, especially when I'm looking at Power from pain. Everyone gets power from pain. In you don't have to be in range of a character. Um, you look at the dogmatas and the canticles. Everyone just gets it. You don't have to be in range. So, and I don't, what I don't get is out of any of the factions, along with the Tyranids, the Tyranids and the Necrons so are the ones that should be able to communicate from any distance. Like, I don't understand why that's even a thing that, that, that they have to be within six inches of something. I don't even mind that you have to have a noble in your army. Fair enough, the noble has to be there, and then if he dies, you lose the command protocols. I don't think that should be a thing, but I think, yeah, you have to have a noble in your army to get command protocols. I'm, I'm cool with that. Just lose lose the restriction of the 
the six inches or make it 12 inches so it just makes it a lot less restrictive because I think even nine inches is still restrictive you know you don't want to have to have 30 characters in your army just to try and get your stuff buffed and everything else seems to get this extra rule for free anyway and we have to really really play you know really tightly group up and all that sort of thing just to get them and we would have to tightly group up anyway for my will be done to get the chronomancer's five up in one to get the technomancer to bring stuff back or to heal the vehicle like we have to be in um to get the can act reanimate up for his six inch has to be within six inches of something so they can get a four and in line of sight it's not just a buff you put on him that's another thing the can act reanimator that should be at least nine inches and it should be a buff you put on something not that you have to be in sight of for the rest of the turn just it's just so restrictive on it it's already dies so easily just let them put a buff on and then they have to be within nine inches at the beginning of the next command phase to put a buff on whichever one next turn i just don't know why you have to make it so restrictive when you look at the rest of the codexes and they haven't got anywhere near that sort of restriction so yeah that's my bit about command protocols and buffs and stuff that we're putting on the army and then the next thing i'm going to go into is core so the core keyword um, we've got five units, so we have Warriors, Immortals, Tomb Blades, Lich Guard, and Death Marks. There are five units with Core. Now, <clears throat> Destroyers make up a good proportion of our book and our infantry. And they didn't give them the Core keyword, because, oh, they're infected by madness and whatever else. But you gave Dreadnoughts Core, like Dreadnoughts are the core of a Space Marine army. In fact, I think there's 40 something data sheets in the Space Marine Army that have got core. Now, I know Death Guard haven't got that many, but then Death Guard haven't got that many infantry units either. So, like, I think personally, the three types of destroyer unit should have core, and I think the flayed one should have core. Because at the moment, they're so underwhelming and they're not getting enough buffs. Um, I mean, why can't we Veil of Darkness some flayed ones or some Scorpec um, destroyers? You know, it's not like we're it's not like it's going to break the game if we can bring a Scorpec Lord back with a Technomancer. Uh, not a Scorpec Lord, sorry, a Scorpec destroyer back with a Technomancer. It's a free wound model. Like they're probably going to kill them all in one turn anyway because they're not that survival. They haven't gone in one unless you use a Chronomancer, which is like eighty points. So I just don't understand why that's even a, a thing um i don't understand why they were so restricted on the core with necrons when they haven't been with others and then moving on top of that is why aren't destroyer lords the lockcast lord and the scorpet lord why aren't they nobles they're lords they've got it in their name oh but they're not nobles anymore because they're madness like sometimes it's like the dreadnought i'm not mad about the dreadnought like, I think it's better with the core keyword, and it should have the core keyword, because it makes it good for the rules. Narratively, I don't think it's core. Whereas, I'm sure destroyers and flayed ones aren't core in a Necron army, but for the rules of the game, I think it would be better if they had the core keyword. Now, you've taken the core keyword away from the Iron Side of Balistari and the Dragoons, so why can't we add the core keyword to the flayed ones and all the destroyers? Because if you find something that suddenly there's army and it's really broken and it's overpowered, then all you need to do is then just restrict a couple of things with an FAQ, job solved, it's done. So next thing um, is points. Now, if you look at our characters, they are so overpointed for what they're doing. So I'm gonna start off with the cryptex. Like, 80 points for a Technomancer of a Canaptic Cloak. I mean, he can bring a model from a core unit back. So he could bring, at best, one Lich Guard or up to D3 Warriors, which is random. So at best, three Warriors. It's not a bad rule. It's, it's good. It's fine. I like it. But it's not breaking the game. He's got... He can also heal a vehicle up D3 as well. So not bad. He has a four up save, he has one attack, he has four wounds, no inbound. Like, 
as soon as anything gets into combat with him, he is dead. He's so soft. And then you've got like, and I know you can't compare in a vacuum, but you've got succubuses that are 60 points that are re-rolling wounds to, uh, ones to wound in combat and for the, their witches and their absolute murder monsters, you know. And don't get me wrong, I know they're different, like Technomance is buffing, but it's just overpriced. You know, it leads at least a drop of, of 10 points and I think the same with the Chronomancer. All the is doing is giving out one buff of Here's an invun and you can re-roll charges, which at the moment, because of the fact of the lack of core, the only re-roll charge bit really is really useful on usually is if you put on Lich Guard. So it's like, mm, it's all right. It's not, again, probably could do with a 10 point um, decrease. And also they put the uh, Entropic, Entropic Staff up to, up 10 points. It's one shot of D3 plus three, no re-roll. You can have a re-roll to wound of a Cesar again. I think it's hitting on freeze. The majority of the time I, I, I miss anyway. I think a 10 point rise was a bit much. I mean, maybe five points. I would have said five points was like, mm, okay. 10 point rise, like it's crazy. Um, or they should have just brought the Aeon Staff down 10 points. It probably would have made it a better um, decision. So they are the, the sort of two main cryptex, if you like. Um, I haven't really used the Plasmancer and the Psymancer, so I can't comment too much on them, but they probably need to come down. Um, then we go into the Overlord, who's like 100 points, I think 95 points, and then with a War Scythe or with the um, Hyperface Gauntlet and Tachyon Arrow is 100 points. 100 points? Is he worth it? Four attacks, toughness five, six wounds, like, he's all right. He's definitely not, I mean, he's given out my will be done once. He gives out a plus one to move for core units, which is all right, it's good. Um, it's probably a bit expensive. I think if um, you took him down, Maybe to 80, you've got a 10 point drop. I think most of the characters need a 10 point drop, if I'm honest. I think that's probably where they need to be sitting. Now, if we go, because I actually think like the Warriors, the Immortals, I think now the Dooms Darks are down. Um, a lot of those things are actually pointed quite well. I wish they had given the Connector Reanimator a four up in Vun. I think that would have actually 80 points or 85 points, whatever it is, with a four up in Vun. I think it's fine once you sort out the the buff part. Um, then we go on to the Katans. Now, I personally think when the book first came out and with what everything was about, I think the Katan was, they put up 20 points, the Nightbringer. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. But now all these other books have come out and all of the ways to deal mortal wounds and all these other things, he dies so quickly. And he's actually really hard. You get him in for like one turn to do some damage and he just falls apart. Now, if you look at Bellacor, I'd much prefer Bellacor's rules on him. You know, minus one to wound at T7. So pretty much everything's wounding you on sixes or at best four. Um, then you've got minus one to hit as well, 16 wounds, so he's obscuring. Um, he ignores invuns as well. He doesn't ignore the Finlay pains, admittedly, um, but he does have psychic ability. He has the powers, that, um, the Catan powers. And Bellacor's 360 points, and, I'd pref and Bellacor's got like a 12 inch move, I believe. Um, and the Catan has an eight inch move. He can't use his powers with the advances, whereas Bellacor can, because he's psychic. He's, the Nightbring is actually really, really restricted. And the Nightbring is 10 points more expensive than Bellacor. So I personally think that the Deceiver needs to go down to about 280. I think that the um, Void Dragon needs to be about 300. And I think the Nightbringer needs to be about 320. That's just my personal opinion. You might completely disagree with me. And maybe I'm wrong. They may, that may be way too much of a drop. 
Um, but that is my personal opinion on them. And if they then did become too much, I would 100% be like, yeah, just put them back, put them back up a bit, because I want a balanced game. I don't want an unbalanced game. Um, which is what these videos are about, is, is about balancing. So, yeah, I'd like to see a few points drops, and I don't think you need to drop the points of the destroyers if you gave them core. I think if you give them core, it sorts them out. I think they're probably good at how they're pointed. Um, you've got more ways of being able to bring them back, and that sort of thing, which um, then makes them more efficient for their points. Um, you can then put buffs on them, stuff like my will be done. You can veil them. It then makes them a, a lot, lot better. Um, so... What do you guys think? Do you guys think that I'm waffling shit again? Probably am. Um, or do you guys think I'm talking a bit of sense? Because I don't think we're going to see any data sheet changes in terms of actual rules. Like I'm not. I don't think we're going to see the buffs change. But I do think we could see some lines change for command protocols, and I do think we could see some core cool words added to data sheets for some of them. I don't think we're going to actually see rules on data sheets change. Like I don't think we're going to see the reanimator get a better buffing rule or anything like that in this edition, but I do think we could get some cool words changed, some keywords changed, I do think we could get the command protocols changed, which would be amazing. So please, GW, help a brother out. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Please like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you in the next one.